Hi everyone, in this video we will create a whole game similar to whole IO or Donut County. First I will show you how to create 3D Collider with a hole with the help of 2D1. Then we will make some physics optimizations, so we will activate rigid bodies only when they are near the hole. Then we will create backface culling shader inside shader graph and with the help of universal render pipeline, render features like a stencil buffer and depth buffer, we will create the whole illusion. Then I will show you how to easily move the hole with the physics raycaster, and also we will create some growing animation when we catch more obstacles. Also, I would like to mention, if you would like more tutorials, you can consider supporting me on Patreon, and you will get all project files from my tutorials, including this one and the link is in the description. Now let's get started. First we will creating a ground, so let's create new quad. Let's change the scale to 10, 10, 10, and let's change rotation to 90, and let's zero out the position. Let's rename it to ground. Now we want to create a whole parent, which will be moving our whole game objects. Inside let's create new cylinder, and let's rename it to whole and change the scale Y to be 0.1. Also, we don't need the collider, so let's remove that one. Now let's create a new game object and let's call it 2D to 3D Collider. First, let's reset the transform. Then inside, let's create another game object and let's call it 2D Ground and let's add Polygon Collider 2D on it. Now we wanna match our ground with our 2D Collider. So let's rotate our ground and back in our 2D Collider, Let's change size of our points to be 4 and let's change the positions to match our 3D ground exactly. Now let's select our ground and let's rotate it back. Select again our 2D to 3D collider and let's create a new game object and let's call it 2D hole. Inside let's create another polygon collider and we can keep this shape which will represent our hole. Now we need to see our 2D colliders even we will not click on them. So let's open our project settings and let's open gizmos and let's check always show colliders. Now our goal is move our 2D hole with our 3D hole parent. So let's select our hole parent and let's add a new script and let's call it on change position. Now let's clean the file. Let's create public polygon collider 2D with the name whole 2D collider. And let's create fixed update loop because we will be using physics, so we don't want to use update. And first, we need to detect if our transform has changed because we want to optimize this function only if we move, rotate, or scale our whole parent. Then we need to reset this value to false because this is not done automatically. Now let's change whole to the collider dot transform dot position to be new vector two. And let's put transform.position x for x and transform position z for a y value. Now let's go back to editor and let's fill our 2D hole collider. Now let's select our whole game object and let's zero out positions because we want to move it only with a parent and also disable it for the selection. Now let's press play and when we are moving our whole parent, our 2D hole collider is also moving, so that's working. Now what we want is to create a hole inside a 2D collider. So let's reference our public polygon collider 2D with the name ground 2D collider and let's create private void make hole 2D function. And first we need to access points on our whole 2D collider. So let's write vector to array with names point position, which will equals to whole 2D collider dot get path. And let's put zero as a first and only path as a parameter. Then let's create for loop with i equals zero to i less than point positions dot length. Now the positions are static, so we need to add our transform position to them. So let's write point position i plus equals all to the collider dot transform dot position, but we need to cast it as a vector two because our point positions have only x and y values. Now inside our ground collider, we want to change path count to be two, and also we want to add our new points. So let's write ground to the collider dot set path, and we want to set the second path, which is index one, and let's put point positions as a second parameter. Now inside fix update, let's call this method. Now let's go back to editor, select our whole parent, let's fill our ground to the collider, press play, and we can see there is a hole inside our collider. Now the next step is create 3D mesh. 
So let's create new private void made 3D mesh collide method. And we need to define a mesh variable with the name generated mesh. And now we can create the mesh. So let's write generated mesh equals to ground to the collider dot create mesh. And let's put true and true for use body positions and use body rotations parameters. Now we need reference to some mesh collider. So let's write public mesh collider generated mesh collider. Now let's use it inside our method and we want to assign the shared mesh, which will equals our generated mesh. Now, every time we are changing the mesh, we need to delete the old one. So at the beginning of the method, let's ask if generated mesh doesn't equal to null, let's destroy it. And also let's don't forget to add it to our fix update. Now to test it, let's create a new empty game object and let's call it 3D ground collider. And also let's add mesh collider component on it. Now select our whole parent and let's assign our 3D ground collider to the generated mesh variable. Now let's turn off the display of our 2D colliders. But on the other side, we want to see our 3D colliders. So let's select window analysis and let's click on physics debugger. Then let's turn off our ground collider and let's test it. And when we move our whole parent, we see the hole inside our 3D collider. Now let's rotate our 3D collider 90 degrees. And when we test it for the last time, we see it matches our 3D collider exactly. Now let's open our onChange position class again and let's add option for changing scale of our hole. So let's create public float initial scale variable, which will equals to 0.5. Now let's change scale inside our fixed update method. So let's write hole to the collider dot transform dot local scale equals to transform dot local scale times initial scale. Now we need to fix our for loop inside our make whole 2D method because we was adding to our points only the position, but now we also want to scale them. And luckily we can use transform point method, which will do exactly this. So our point position i will equals to whole 2D collider dot transform dot transform point. And inside let's use our point position i. Now when we press play, we see the hole is smaller. And let's try to scale our whole parent and we can see our generated 3D hole is scaling as well. Now to continue, let's create some obstacles. So let's create new game object with the name obstacles and inside let's create new cube. Let's move it above our ground, scale it a little bit in the X and Z axis. And also let's add a rigid body component. Let's duplicate it. Now let's test it. Now watch when we move our whole parent, it is always activating the obstacles. And for optimizations, we want them to be activated only when our hole will be under them. So to fix it, let's select our ground and let's turn on the collider because we will be using it in our setup. Now let's create three more layers. First will be ground, second will be ground hole and third will be obstacles. Now let's select our ground and let's assign the ground layer on it. Then let's select our 3D ground collider and let's assign our ground hole. And then let's select our two obstacle cubes and let's assign the obstacles layer to them. Now let's open our project settings again. Let's select our physics. And first we want to clean our collision matrix. So let's uncheck all layer interactions because we want to tidy it up a little bit. So we want to interact our obstacles with obstacles. So boxes can interact with each others. Then we want our ground hole to interact with the obstacles and also the ground want to interact with obstacles. Now let's close the window, select our whole parent and let's add sphere collider. And this collider will be trigger. And what we want is when the collider is touching some obstacle, the obstacle wake up and it will fall through the hole. So to set it up, let's open our script. So inside let's create onTriggerEnter method. And what we want, first, when we touch our collider with our obstacle, we want to turn off collisions between our ground and our obstacle. So let's write physics.ignoreCollisions. And now we need to reference our ground collider. So let's write public collider ground collider. And now let's ignore collisions between other, which are basically obstacles, and also our ground collider with a true as a last parameter. Now let's create 
on trigger exit method and let's copy the line and let's put false as a last parameter so we are restoring collisions between ground and obstacles after we move our collider but this is not enough we also want to include our generated mesh collider which represents the hole so let's copy the line and for this one we want to do opposite thing so when our ground collider is ignored we want our hole collider to be active and also for our trigger exit we want the other way around now we still have a small problem when we play our game right now our generated mesh collider will be colliding with our obstacles at the beginning so they will not sleep and the game will not be optimized so to prevent it let's create star method and to turn off collisions first we need to find all obstacles so let's create new game object array with the name all geos which will equal to find objects of type and the type will be game object and we want to cast it as game object array then we want to create for each loop where we are looping each game object in this array and now we are finally asking if geo.layer equals to layer mask dot name to layer and let's put obstacles as our layer name and when we find that our game object is obstacle we want to create physics dot ignore collision and we need to find a collider so let's put game object dot get component and let's put collider as a type and we want to ignore collision with our generated mesh collider with the true as a parameter and now let's save the file let's go back to editor select our whole parent and we need to field our ground collider and also let's change the layer to be ground hole and only for this game object so let's press play to test it now we can see when we are moving the objects are still inactive unless we touch them and they will fall so this is working great so let's close our physics debugger now let's focus on the shader creation so let's show our scene in a shaded view let's open a whole parent let's select the whole game object and let's duplicate it and let's change the name to whole mask because we will be using stencil buffer we need a masking geometry now let's select whole game object and let's change the size in the y-axis to be 2 and we need to move it lower but still it needs to be a little bit above our ground so I put 1.99 and also let's select the whole mask and let's move this one also a little bit lower and I put minus 0 0.095 let's go back to our shaded view select hole and we want to create two more layers and first one will be shader hole and second one will be shader hole mask let's select hole and let's assign shader hole layer and let's select hole mask and let's assign shader hole mask layer now we want to use universal render pipeline so we need to import it from our package manager it will took some time but it's fine now let's close the window inside our asset let's create new rendering universal render pipeline and pipeline asset let's open our project settings select our graphics and let's select our universal render pipeline asset now let's fix the shaders so let's create new folder and let's call it materials and shaders inside let's create new material and let's call it basic then let's create new shader and it will be pbr graph and let's call it basic shader and let's assign our shader to our material now let's assign our material to our ground let's select our two obstacles and let's also assign it to them now for hole let's create new material and let's call it whole material and also we need a shader and it will be again pbr graph and let's call it whole shader let's assign it to our material now we can assign it to the whole game object now let's open the shader and what we want from our hole to have inverted normals so we need to create new position node let's change space to be object and we want to multiply it with a minus one so let's create vector one let's connect it to the multiply and let's change the value to be minus one and let's connect it to our vertex position now we need to also invert the normals so let's create a normal vector node let's change the space to be object let's again multiply it with a minus one so let's reuse our vector one node and just connect it to our vertex normal 
Now for the color, let's create a UV node and we want to use only a green channel. So let's create split node. Then let's create multiply node and let's connect it with our green channel. And also let's create vector one property and let's call it edge. And let's connect it with our multiplied node and let's try different values and we can keep it on 10. Now let's create new add node and by add node we will be changing the position of this edge. So inside blackboard let's create another vector one value with the name thickness and it will basically thickness of our edge and let's change the default value to be minus 5. Now for the colors we want to create two properties. First one will be border color and let's put default color to be red and second color will be a base color and a default value will be green. Now before we use the lab node we need to clamp our black and white values between 0 and 1. So let's add a saturate node which will do it and now finally we can create the lab node and let's connect the saturate to the t-slot and let's connect our border color to slot A and our base color to slot B and let's connect our LERP to the albedo color and now we have nice gradual blend between two colors which will be faking the thickness of the edge. Now back in editor our material is quite dark so let's change a lighting a little bit. So select environment, change the source to be color and let's change the color so we can see more our material but we will finish it later. Now let's solve the masking. Let's select our whole mask and let's click on a material and let's assign a none because the old one was incompatible with this render pipeline. Now let's select our asset and let's select our universal render pipeline renderer. Now let's create new render objects. Override. Let's change the name to be mask and let's change the layer mask to be shader whole mask. Now let's turn on the stencil which will be creating a masking. Now we want to fill our stencil buffer for this mask to be one and to be actually writing it we need to keep our compare function to be always and then we want to define what we want to do with the pixels of this mask and we want to replace them so let's select pass and replace. Now to replace the pixels with something let's create another render objects and let's change the name to be whole and here we want to change the layer mask to be shader whole now let's open our overrides and let's check the depth and let's change depth test to be always and we can see entire hole is on top of everything and what we are missing is to mask it with our stencil buffer so let's turn it on and we want to check stencil buffer for the value 1 which we changed by our mask and also we want to change compare function to be equal this number and now we can see nice representation of the hole but the effect is not ready let's put the obstacle inside the hole and we can see the obstacle is cutted and we don't want this so let's select again our render let's add another render object and let's change the layer mask to be obstacle and because now the obstacles are rendered last we can see them inside the hole but we still see some shadow so let's select our ground and let's turn off the shadow and now the shadows are fixed now if for some reason we want to hide the long hole inside our game view again let's select our renderer and let's select our opaque layer mask and let's uncheck shader hole and the hole disappear but we still can see through now let's move the obstacle back and let's select the whole game object and we will fix the shader Let's change the edge value to be 110. Let's change our color to be black. And let's change our base color to be slightly reddish. Now the hole has nice edge. We can test it. And it is working nicely. Now I prepared a new scene with a lot more obstacles which represent buildings and cars. And I also changed the lighting and material a little bit. So let's press play to test it. And we can see it's working as before, but we're still moving the hole inside editor and we want to do it inside a game view. So first let's select our main camera and let's add the physics ray caster on it and we want to change the event mask to be a ground so always when we click on a ground the input event will be triggered but for this we need also to create event system now only our ground is receiving the events 
So we need to select our ground and let's create new event trigger. And we need two of them. First one will be pointer down and second one will be drag event. Even when we click on a ground or when we drag on it, we want to change position of the hole. Now this event needs some method to run. So let's select our whole parent and let's open our on change position script. And here let's create new public void method with the name move. And this method needs to have even data as a parameter. But first let's add the unity engine dot event system namespace and to our method add base event data my event as a parameter now we need to check if our raycast from our mouse is not off the screen or somewhere so let's ask if my event but we need to cast it as a pointer event data event and we want to ask if our pointer current raycast is valid and if yes we want to change the transform dot position to be equal and let's copy our pointer current raycast and we want a worked position from it save the file let's select our ground let's add a new pointer down event let's assign whole parent to it and from function let's choose on change position and let's pick move and let's do the same for our drag now let's test it and we can see it's working perfectly when we move our mouse and dragging it everything is working how we want now let's fix one more thing let's create a trigger which will be killing the falling obstacles so create new game object with the name killer collider let's reset the transform and let's add box collider let's move it down a little bit and let's change scale to be 10 in x and 10 at z and you want the collider to be trigger. Also let's assign a ground so it will be included in physics. Now let's create one more script with the name conditions. Let's open it and let's create on trigger enter method and inside we want to destroy our obstacles. So let's write destroy and let's put other.gameObject as parameter. Now let's test it. And we can see the obstacles are destroyed by trigger. Now we want to add some uh, options for growing our hole when we add some points. So let's create private void calculate progress method. And for this one, let's create public in points, which will equal to zero. Now, always when we call this calculate progress, we want to increase points count. And also we want to ask if Point. and let's use modulo which is basically a remainder after division and you want to divide it by 10 and if this remainder will equal to zero that means after each 10 objects fall into the hole we want to start a coroutine which will be growing our hole and this coroutine we want to write inside an on change position so let's create public i enumerator scale hole and inside let's write vector3 start scale equals to transform.local scale. Then we need vector3 end scale, which will equal to start scale times two. Then we want to create float t, which will be representing our time, which will be zero. Now we want to create a while loop where we are asking if t is still less than or equals to 0 0.4. And if yes, let's add to our t time to delta time. And also let's change the transform dot local scale to be equal to vector 3 dot lerp. And we want to interpolate between start scale and end scale by our t value. And finally, let's write yield return now. Now let's go back to our condition script and we want to reference to our on change position class. So let's write public on change position with the name whole script. And inside star coroutine, we want to start whole script dot scale whole. And also last step, don't forget to include our calculate progress inside our on trigger enter. Now let's save the file and we want to fill the whole script and let's press play. And after we catch 10 objects, our hole will be growing by nice animation. So I hope you like this tutorial. So thank you and I'll see you in the next one.